Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, we set up the API and authentication for .NET MAUI. In this part, I'm going to show you how to do CRUD operations in .NET MAUI using a web API secured with JWT bearer tokens. Let's start by opening your API project. Then we create a simple product class with the properties ID, product ID, name, and price. Next, open application DB context and add a DB set for products. This tells Entity Framework to manage a products table. Now open the package manager console, then run the migration commands to create your database tables. After the table is created, right click the controllers folder and add a new controller. We will choose API controller with actions using entity framework. Then select the product model and your application DB context. Finally click add. Visual Studio will scaffold a products API with all the CRUD actions for you. To require authentication, you can add the authorized attribute to the controller class. This ensures only logged in users can access the endpoints. Let's run the API project, then browse to swagger slash index.html to see and test the endpoints. Now switch to the MAUI project, then create an interface named iProductService inside the services folder. This interface declares the methods we need to call the API. We also create a product model inside the models folder. This model is used to serialize and deserialize JSON. Inside iProductService, we define all the methods that will handle the CRUD operations through the API. Next, implement product service which inherits iProduct service. We use HTTP client to call the API. HTTP client is the standard class in .NET for sending HTTP requests and receiving responses. Copilot can scaffold most of this code, but here's the idea in simple words. In the create async method, we serialize the product, send a POST request, ensure the response is successful, and deserialize the result back into a product object. If deserialization fails, we throw an exception. Finally, we return the created product. In the delete async method, we simply send a delete request to the API with the product ID, ensure the call succeeds, and return when the deletion is complete. In the get product by either sync method, we send a get request with the product ID, check the response, and then deserialize the product from the return JSON.
Inside the get products async method, we send a get request to retrieve all products, ensure the call succeeds, and deserialize the response into a list of products. Inside the update async method, we serialize the updated product into JSON, send a put request to the API endpoint, ensure the response is successful, and then deserialize the updated product from the response. Now add an authorized handler class. This is a delegating handler that attaches the JWT token to every outgoing request. When the user logs in, we store the JWT token in secure storage. The handler reads that token and adds an authorization header automatically. This way, every API call is authenticated without repeating code. Next, right-click your MAUI project, then choose .NET MAUI content page and name it product form page. This page lets users enter or edit a product. It contains fields for product ID, name, and price, along with a save button and a cancel button. The layout uses scroll view and vertical stack layout, so it works on small screens. Product ID entry is where you type the product code. Product name entry holds the product name. Product price entry accepts numbers only because the keyboard is set to numeric. The save button triggers the unsave clicked handler, and the cancel button triggers the uncancel clicked handler. Now for the code behind. In the oncancel clicked handler, we call navigation.pop async to go back to the previous page. At the top of the product form page class, we add a query property that allows the page to receive an ID when navigating for edit. In the product form page constructor, we inject i product service. We also override the onAppearing method. Inside it, we first check whether the product ID is not null. If it isn't, we load the product and update the form fields. Inside the onSave clicked handler, we first create a product object from the form. Then we check the product ID. If it's present, we update the product. Otherwise, we create a new one. After saving, we navigate back. Now open your main page.xaml. We'll modify this page to support adding, editing, and deleting product data. The top button navigates to the product form. The collection view displays product ID, name, and price. Each item also has a delete button. In the main page code behind, we inject iProductService. We will create a load product async method, which will load the list of products and display them in the collection view. You also need to override the onAppearing method, which allows the page to reload the products whenever it appears. Inside the onDelete clicked handler, we first show a confirmation dialog. If the user confirms, we call the service to delete the product and then reload the list.
When a list item is selected, we navigate to the edit form and pass the ID through the query. Once the navigation is complete, we clear the selected item. In the Add Product Clicked Handler, we use the Go to Async method to navigate to Product Form page. Now open MauiProgram.cs and register the services as follows. You also need to set the base address to your API URL and add the authorized handler so the token is attached automatically. Let's open the App Shell class, then register the route. This allows Shell to navigate to product form page by name. And that's it. Now let's try it out on the Android emulator. We'll start by logging into the app. You can also create a new account here if needed. Then we'll try out the CRUD operations for products. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment with any questions or share what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next video.